In this video, we race the Three Bridge Fiasco in 2023. This is a race held by the Single Handed Sailing Society, and the course is to go around three different marks. Each mark is next to or part of one of the bridges, making up the three bridges in the San Francisco Bay. For the Bay Bridge, you have to go around Yerba Buena Island. For the Richmond Bridge, you have to go around an island called Red Rock. And for the Golden Gate Bridge, you have to go around a yellow mark called Black Holler. You can go around these marks in any order and in any direction. Combine that loose framework with the various tides and fluky winds in February in the San Francisco Bay, and you get what is essentially 300 boats doing the most chaotic course you've ever heard of. The other important thing to know about this race is that it's a pursuit style race. What this means is that they take each boat's PHRF rating and they factor it in to the distance of the course, and then they give you a specific start time. This means that not all 300 boats start at the same moment, but that each boat has a very specific start time based on its ratings. And in theory, if everybody were to sail a perfect race with wind, that all boats would cross the finish line at the exact same time, assuming also that each rating is correct. This also means that when you're on the course and you pass somebody, you're legitimately passing them in the rankings. This isn't always the case with PHRF ratings where you sail your race and then they factor in corrections at the very end and your spot may go up or down several places depending on other boats PHRF ratings. Guys, if you're not starting, don't be over here. If you're not starting, don't be at the start line. As I mentioned earlier, you can round any of the three marks in any order and in any direction. From a social perspective, what this means is that the weeks leading up to the race are full of people guessing and wondering and asking which way everybody is going to round the various marks. Everybody has their own theory of why they want to go one way or another, and then of course at the end of the race you find out who was correct. In this particular race, we ended up getting third in our class and about fifth or sixth in the overall fleet of 300 boats. That's before we had a penalty applied to us for entering the starting box a little bit too early. For that penalty, we have 20 minutes tacked on to our uh, finish time. We fought this penalty a little bit but at the end of the day, the race committee thought that it was warranted. And so our rankings in reality, the official rankings are a little bit different. I'm still really happy with how we performed. And at the end of the day, if you didn't apply the penalty, we would have done really, really well, which I think is something that we could be proud of. Our strategy in this race was to go with the flow, quite literally. In San Francisco Bay, over the years I've learned to win races just generally never fight tide. It's usually fairly strong, anywhere from two to five knots 
in some places. And to fight those kinds of tides, it just destroys any strategy you have around wind or anything like that. So if you can get current underneath you, you have consistent speed going in a given direction. And then if you add wind, you have actual boat speed going in that direction as well. So for us, with a flood current in the morning and then an ebb in the afternoon, we wanted to go around Yerba Buena Island first and let the tide push us to the back of the bay. After Yerba Buena Island, we tried to fight a little bit of current, but with wind at least, through the middle of the bay, up to Red Rock. And then from Red Rock we went to Black Aller with not only outgoing tide from the bay, but also all the water from the San Joaquin and Sacramento rivers behind us as well trying to go out. And it had rained earlier in the week, giving even more force to those floats. After rounding Yerba Buena Island, many boats tucked up into the island nice and close to try to get relief from incoming current. It also got them relief from any puff of air that there might have been coming out of the east side of the bay. What we ended up doing was noticing some ripples on the water over towards the port of Oakland and the east side of the bay and we got away from the island. This may have given us a little bit of remainder current still coming into the bay but we had enough wind to get about two knots of boat speed through the water, which was enough to also fight some current. And once we got a good wind direction, we were able to reset the kite and even pull it out to windward slightly and go a little bit deeper and closer to our next mark, which would be Red Rock. Bay Bridge, we found ourselves pinched between two J125s. These are incredible boats that are all carbon fiber and are generally designed to go downwind as quickly as possible to places like Hawaii or Mexico. Both of these boats did very well in this three bridge fiasco and the official rankings actually have all three of the top spots filled by J125s for our class in particular. That boat, Roofless, also ended up winning the overall race against all 300 and some boats. If you ever wanted to see a slow motion of a windward douse a spinnaker on a race boat, here it is. Without any wind, every douse is about the most boring douse you've ever seen. The fun part of this race, though, is when the two different fleets who bet opposite end up crossing each other at the back side of the bay. One group is going downwind, the other group going upwind. It's a big confusing mess, and in this case, more people chose to go around Red Rock first before Yerba Buena Island, and so the fleet coming downwind at us was massive. It was also incredibly beautiful given the variety of colors of spinnakers that were up in there. It was truly amazing. Here's a time lapse 
of us weaving our way through this giant fleet of downwind boats. I see Ron, I think. Do you? Behind yeah. that. We're still beating the other J133. <laughs> the goal, that's the intent. No, I may be wrong. Uh, and then uh, we'll try to rip, ride the outgoing current all the way out to Black Holler next to the Golden Gate Bridge. And maybe we'll have wind doing that too. We'll see. But yeah, next stop, uh, Red Rock. Oh yeah. And then we had our jib halyard chafed through. If you see that red circle up there, it's showing a birdcage marker or some large piece structure that was a navigational hazard just sort of floating around. Uh, and we had to change course in order to miss it. When we came down, it loaded up the jib halyard, and then it popped.
our boat has a second jib halyard and so we are able to attach that and get the jib right back up again. Ira had been doing all the tacks with this giant 145% jib all day long so I decided to relieve her. She was so tired by the end of the day. But we called this a success, a very quick changeover from one jib halyard to the other and it kept us right in the race. With this last tack, we are on our way around Red Rock and then back downwind again through Raccoon Straits and over to Black Holler. corner, we furled the jib and threw the spinnaker up and had a great downwind run all the way to the Golden Gate Bridge. Give a little tension. As soon as we were at the correct angle to throw in a jibe and head through Raccoon Straits, that's what we did. It was a key part of our strategy to go through Raccoon Straits, as I mentioned earlier. It had rained recently, and so the San Joaquin and Sacramento rivers were swollen with rainwater coming down them and into the bay. 
the raccoon straits that we're entering is a choke point for all of that water that's going out and you can get really extreme currents going through that space we had about three knots of current with us as we went through raccoon straits and then about seven or eight knots of boat speed as well so speed over ground was truly respectable going in the direction we wanted to go There is a hazard though to all of this water exiting the bay through the Golden Gate Bridge, which is essentially your Tokyo drifting your way around the course. Here we are jiving in order to head to a mark that's off to our starboard side. But we have to head up as high as we are in order to account for the tidal offset that's trying to suck us out the Golden Gate Bridge would be the last mark in our race before going to the finish line. You may have been wondering so far what that heart shape is on the foot of our spinnaker. Well, that's the attachment point for a takedown line, which is what I'm pulling off the foot of the spinnaker right now. It's a line that runs to that heart shape patch on the foot of the spinnaker. And when you pull on it, and release the tack, it allows you to do a letterbox drop that has even less of a risk of the spinnaker refilling because your point of pulling down on the spinnaker is at the very center of the spinnaker. It allows the clue in the tack to fold outwards and not catch any wind. When we got the takedown patch, I was leaving the sail loft and they asked what color I wanted and I asked since this is an old beat up spinnaker, could you do something like hot pink? And they said, absolutely. They also asked what shape I wanted. They said, heck, I can do anything you want. Do you want a heart? And I said, absolutely, do a heart. So just in time for Valentine's Day, we had a giant heart shaped patch on the foot of our spinnaker to help us with takedowns. Yeah. All right. Halyard? Pull, pull, pull. I'm gonna do the halyard. Yep, do it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, all the way off. Can you take this and start pulling it? Go ahead, I'm gonna steer.
with that, we finished 2023 Three Bridge Fiasco. I'm truly proud of how we did, evidenced by, for instance, Scott Eason coming in right behind us. That's him with the black and white spinnaker on a boat called Eight Ball. He does all the rigging for boats like Pie Wacket. And we were also up there with the J125s that we were competing with earlier around Yerba Buena Island. These are sailors who we respect and revere as some of the best on the bay. And we couldn't be happier to have been in contention with them all the way up to the very end. As I mentioned earlier, we had a penalty applied to us. And with that penalty of 20 minutes, we corrected out to something like ninth out of 10 or 11 boats in our class and 60th possibly or some, some massive number in the uh, overall ranking of the entire race. While we disagreed with the line judges call, it is what it is and there's always next year. We'll see you all for the 2024 Three Bridge Fiasco.